so in this video we're going to have a look at the volume and surface area of cylinders. Now I'm going to use a lot of the same principles in this video as I did in the video on 3D prisms, so do make sure you check that out looking at the volume of 3D prisms first, but we're going to be using those same principles of looking at um, the cross-sectional area when looking at volume. So that video might be quite helpful to look at first, but we are also going to look at surface area in this particular video. So we're only going to be looking at cylinders, we're going to start with volume, look at surface area, so grab a piece of paper, grab a pen, make some notes, and we're going to have a look at this question first. Now we're going to be using a calculator as well, so make sure you grab a calculator. Now it says here, work out the volume of the cylinder and give your answer to three significant figures. Now as I mentioned, we're going to be using the same principle as before. Okay, So we're going to look at the cross-sectional area, which in this case is the circle sitting on top. So in order to work out the area of a circle, we need to make sure we know the formula for the area of a circle. And the formula for the area of a circle is area equals pi r squared, where r is the radius. Now this question has given us the radius, sometimes a question might give you the diameter, it might have said that the full length across was 22, and in which case we would need to halve it in order to achieve or get the radius there. So to work out the area here, we're going to do pi and multiply that by the number we've been given which is 11 squared, there we go. Now depending on which calculator you've got, that might give you the answer 121 pi, so you're going to need to turn that into a decimal, but again you might not have a calculator that actually shows that functionality. It is quite a handy function if you have got one and it is worth investing into a Casio calculator. Again I'll put some links in the description if you want to check some out. But there we go, there's our answer 121 pi, and I'm going to write the answer as a decimal just in case anyone is using this and doesn't have a calculator that shows your answer like that. And ultimately we've got to give our answer to three significant figures anyway. So that answer there comes out as 380.1327111 and that is the area of the cross-sectional area up there which is a circle. Now in order to work out the volume, just like we did on 3D prisms when we were looking at the volume of a prism, we are going to multiply it by how far that face goes through the shape, in which in this case that is the height of the cylinder, so that's going to be 30 centimetres. So we take the area, multiply it by the height which is 30, and we're going to get a final answer there. So if we multiply that by 30 on the calculator, again we get an answer in terms of pi, but if we just write down the decimal version we get 11,403.98133. So there is our volume, obviously that's going to be in centimetre cubed, so we won't forget that when we write our final answer, but we need to round this to three significant figures as we've been asked in the question here. And we're going to be looking at three significant figures throughout all of these questions. So in order to round that to three significant figures, we're going to go from the first whole number, three along, so 114, chop it after the four, and in this case the number that we've chopped after is in the hundreds position, so actually we're going to be rounding this to the nearest hundred. So three significant figures in this case will be the nearest hundred. So that's going to be as a final answer 11,400 centimetres cubed. And there is our final answer for the volume of a cylinder. Okay, so hopefully nice and easy. It links in very nicely with the volume of prisms in the video that I mentioned before. We're just going to work out the area of the cross section, which again in this case is a circle, and then times that by the height. So obviously there is your example, and here's a question for you to have a go at. Okay, so here's your two questions. So pause the video there, have a go at these, and we'll go over the answers in a sec. Okay, so for the first one here then. Now we, know we need to do the area of the circle, so we're going to do pi times, and the radius is 4 in this question, so pi times 4 squared. And rather than writing the answer for that down, I'm just straight away going to multiply that by the 24. So pi times 4 squared, multiply by the 24, and let's check that on the calculator. Pi times 4 squared times 24 comes out as 384 pi or 1206. So if we write that down, 1206, and we've got some decimals here, 371579, and we're given our answer to three significant figures. So again, 120, chop it after the zero, and we have a final answer to the nearest 10 this time for three significant figures here, and that's going to be 1200 and 10 and again centimeters cubed and there's our final answer for the first one moving on to the second one this time we've been given the diameter so i'm just going to draw onto the diagram here that the radius is six so i don't forget that and we're going to do pi multiplied by the radius squared which is six so times six squared multiplied by 18 and let's see what we get for that so pi times six squared multiplied by 18 
and that gives us an answer of 2035 and some decimal places. So we have 2035.75204. There we go. And again, obviously, we just need to round that to three significant figures. So 203, chop it after the three. And again, that's going to be the nearest 10. So that's going to be 2040. And again, units, not forgetting those, centimetres cubed. And there are our two answers for those two cylinders. Right, okay, so that is volume of a cylinder, quite nice and quick. And now we're gonna have a look at working out the surface area. So let's have a look at that now. Okay, so the surface area of a cylinder just requires a little bit more working out. Obviously we're looking at area, so it's gonna be a little bit different anyway, but we have just got a little bit more working out when we're working out the surface area as opposed to when we're working out the volume. Now when we're working out the surface area, we're gonna work out the total area of all the different surfaces. And you can see we've got a circle on the top and we've already been working out the area of that and the one that you can't see that's on the bottom. If I try and highlight that in, you've got a little circle down there as well. So we're going to have to work out the area of those two. Obviously they're both identical, so we only need to focus on the one on the top and then we can double it up. And then we also have another surface here and that is the curved surface going around the outside of the cylinder. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a sec. But if we start with the circles, um, as we've already been working those out, we should be able to get those done nice and easily. So for the area of the circle, obviously it's pi r squared. So we're going to do pi times the 9.3 squared and that's going to give us the area of the circle. And if we write that into our calculator, what have we got? 271.716. Now it wants the answer to three significant figures. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep my answers to about three decimal places, which in this case for these looks like it's going to be about six significant figures for this one. But I'm just going to keep it to a higher degree of much higher degree of accuracy than we want in our final answer. It's a good practice just to write them all down, but I think we'll be absolutely fine keeping it to those three decimal places. So we've got 271 point and we get 716. Now, and there's obviously a few more decimals after that. Now, obviously we're gonna double that up as we have two of these circles. So if we times that by two, that's gonna give us the total area of those two circles. So I'm just gonna do times two on my calculator straight away. And there we go, we'll write down these. So we have here 543 .43 and actually when we double the answer that I had on the calculator, that's gonna round up to 433. Okay, so there we go. Um, there is the answer on the calculator. Obviously there's a little bit of difference there, obviously with the number above, I've not actually doubled that number, I've doubled the one on the calculator. But if I just write, if I was to just, in fact, let's just write everything down, just to avoid that little bit of confusion, confusion there. So we have 4326972, that's the full answer that I've got on my calculator. So that is the total surface area of the two circles. Now we need to have a look at, as we mentioned, the curved surface around the outside. Now if you imagine that we if this was like a hollow cylinder and we took a pair of scissors and we cut down the center just here and we unraveled the cylinder and flattened it out, what we would actually have is a rectangle, okay? So we would have a rectangle, it would have a length here of 12.4, the height of the cylinder, but we would need to work out the length going along the top. Okay, this length just here. So in order to get that length there, if we look at our cylinder, that length there is actually the length that's going around the outside of the top there, around the circumference of the circle. So actually that length that we're trying to work out on the top of that rectangle, let's see if we can get rid of that arrow there, is actually just the circumference of the circle. And the formula for circumference is pi times diameter or pi times 2r, depending on which formula you use, but this one seems to be more recognized, so we'll go with circumferences pi times diameter. Now obviously that means we need to know the diameter of the um, cylinder here, and we've got 9.3 as the radius, so if we double that we get 18.6 as our diameter. So in order to work out the length along the rectangle there, we can do pi and multiply that by 18.6. Six. Obviously that has a numerical answer, but I'm just going to leave it as, eight, as pi times 18.6. So to get the area of the rectangle, that's nice and easy, it's just length times width. So if the length is pi times 18.6, and the width is 12.4, if we multiply those all together, let's see what we get. Pi times 18.6 times 12.4, and that gives us a final answer of 724. 724.576 and what else have we got? 
six. There we go, just about fit that in. So that is the curved surface area around the outside of the cylinder. Now obviously we need to add these all together to get the total area, so we're gonna add these two numbers together and that's gonna give us our total surface area. Let's just put a little plus there. Obviously just being careful with this sort of question, we're gonna add those up in a sec, but obviously just being careful that that curved surface area there, we're getting the circumference as the length of that rectangle. I think that's the difficulty here, remembering to do that when you've got this type of question. But there we go, that's how we're gonna work these out. We just need to finish this off by adding those together. So I'm gonna do that inside the cylinder there. So we've got 724.576, the curved, plus the two circles, 543.4326972, there we go. Pressing equals, and we get a final answer here of 1,268.0000. 0927 and again three significant figures so let's round that off one two six the number in front of the line is the nearest ten so that's going to be one thousand two hundred and seventy and again it's about area this time so that's going to be centimeters squared so there's our final answer one thousand two hundred seventy centimeters squared for our surface area okay so obviously you've got the two circles to work out and the curved part using that circumference for the length of the rectangle but there we go there is your example and here is your final question to have a go at okay so here's your final question on the surface area of a cylinder so pause the video there have a go and we'll go over the answer in a sec right so let's start with the circles so we've got a radius of four so we know to get the area here we need to do pi times four squared and that's going to give us the area of that circle. So pi times 4 squared, I'm going to write down that answer before I double it. So that's going to be 50 point, and we get 265, 482, 46. That's the area of one of the circles. So let's times that by 2, and that's going to give us the area of the two circles. Let's just write in that we're timesing it by 2, and that's going to equal 100. 0.530 And there we go, I'm going to highlight that because that's the area of our two circles. Now we're going to move on to the area of the curved surface area. So we have the rectangle that's going around the outside. We've got a height of 15 and we just need to know again that circumference that's going around the top. So in order to get that, again, we need the diameter. So I'm gonna write that down the bottom here, that the, the diameter is eight, double of four. So that's gonna be eight times pi, or pi times eight, okay, pi times diameter. So in order to get the area of this rectangle, we're gonna do length times width. So 15 times the eight times pi. And that's gonna give us our area there, which if we work that out, comes out as 376. 0.991184 and there is our curved surface area. So there's our two areas, just like before, we're just gonna add those two numbers together. So we'll do the curved surface area plus the two circles. And if I add that up on the calculator, so I'm gonna add the 100.5309649 onto my 376 and I get a final answer here of 477.5220833. And again, we're gonna round that to three significant figures. So let's chop that after the third number there, which is the final seven. So that's gonna to be to the nearest whole number. And there's a five after the line, so that's gonna to go to 478 centimeters squared. Again, not forgetting it's an area. So there we go, there is the final answer, and that's how you work out the surface area of a cylinder. Again, like I said at the beginning, don't forget to check out the video on the volume of prisms, okay? That's gonna be really helpful for obviously the volume of a cylinder, but the surface area of a cylinder is quite unique as it has this circular face. But there we go, I hope you found that useful and helpful. If you did, please like, please comment, please subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one.